Hi, my name is James. I'm standing here next to my soon coming digital studio at my homestead. However, this video is about 850 meal on a posterior restoration and I'm so excited about it. It's the second one of this mini series. The first video was about shaping an Emacs and making it look really nice, giving it that extra little sizzle when we're giving our best clinically in Chairside, it's an extension of who we are to our clients. And that's one thing I enjoy so much about Chairside CAD CAM. It's allowed me to be more in control of my clinical theater with occlusion, aesthetics, and the great materials we have today has been wonderful. This video is about 850 meal application on a posterior tooth, and it's the basic workflow. 850 meal, meal 850, I'm just gonna call it 850. Posteriorly, what I like best about this 850 is the glaze. The glaze is phenomenal. Even if that's the only thing you're using, it just makes that surface once it's fired, because we can place it on pre-crystallized. Once that's fired on Emacs, it has that beautiful natural look, and we really don't have to do a lot with it after that. Now, we also have colors, and what I love about these colors is that they're more translucent, so they have a tendency to melt within the tooth and they look internalized. So even though this is on posterior application of 850, wait until we get to the anterior application because it's absolutely amazing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into 850 meal application and our workflow on a posterior molar. Just a quick request, hit that like button. That helps with the algorithms here on YouTube and subscribe and hit that bell. That way you know when the next video is coming. Now let's get on with our technique video for 850 meal on Emacs. I feel so blessed to be able to use CAD CAM and particularly with the support systems like meal 850. This is a game changer. That aesthetics is just gorgeous. This is one application. This video will show you how we got this application to look so natural. We're gonna fill our restoration with object fix, overfill. So when the die pin is plunged in, it will seal most of the margins. In this case, our object fix is a little dry, so we have to encourage it by teasing it all the way to the margins everywhere that will support those margins during firing and prevent glaze from getting underneath. Now, this is the meal glaze. This is the magic in the meal 850 system. Just the glaze itself is gonna make this look so natural. We'll paint the glaze horizontal along the margins. Now on the interproximal zone, paint it thinner there, otherwise it will add volume and you'll have to adjust that to get it to go down. On the occlusal table, paint the glaze from the central groove out toward the cussed rim up the triangular ridge. We want to avoid puddling down in those deeper areas there. That will interfere with our color saturation. We're gonna add some dentinal warmth. We don't want puddling in that area. Our next step is to take the cervical color, which is the dentin, and apply. Lightly dab it into the depths of the grooves and pits, and you'll see it just blend and feather out. Considering the external grooves as well, this provides a really natural look. It is subtle, it's gonna look great. On the cervical zone, if you need to highlight more of a cervical saturation of the dentinal shade, you wanna feather that from the margin into the mid body area. Now, after time, as you get experience, you'll kind of get a feel on how much saturation, the level of chroma that you're gonna apply here. 
you do want to feather it, and you'll find that this material doesn't really blotch. It's more translucent, and that's the beauty of the meal system. <laughs> I always chuckle at this stage in the video. We're adding some warmth. And I know what some of you are thinking. My patients are going to complain, and some of mine will as well. However, I'm very sensitive to the patient. So when we do add the warmer brown shade, I'm using the anodonic 15 file. We add the color and then remove it with the brush. And that's the way we handle both brown and white. You apply oversaturating and then take the tip of that refined brush neutralizing it, mixing it into the prior dentinal shade, and you'll see the final effect is just gorgeous. Depending on the case, if we need to make the cusp tips a little more translucent, this is where smoke is excellent. A light application of smoke will bring down that value and provide that nice translucency, and you can see it's really subtle, but it's gonna look great. And then we can pop and punch those cusp tips with lumen. That creates a little more of an enamel look, and it will emphasize the lower value in contrast. It's a nice technique to know. It's going to be very subtle. I also like to place lumen on the non-functional occlusal zones. This is just for me. It will brighten up those triangular ridges where we don't have the function. And 850 responds well in all the crystallization cycles and furnaces. And voila, one firing out of the furnace. Take a look at the beautiful restoration. I've never seen anything like this in my career. The beauty of this material and what it can do for us is beautiful. And the technique that you saw me use in this video provided that result. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you post them below. You will find that with the 850 meal that it's really forgiving. It's hard to mess it up. I've used it in a number of my classes now, and I'll tell you, everybody really rocks with it, and it's technique simple. <laughs> it really is. It's technique simple. So, thanks for watching this video. Post your comments and questions, and I'll see you folks in that next video real soon. Bye now.